Michael Jordan is known for a lot of things, but beyond his greatness, he's always had a reputation for being one of the best trash talkers in history. Some would say he went a bit overboard with some of his insults and actions, and many of his peers and even himself have admitted he was, at times, very arrogant and rude. But that all comes with the package. In this video, we're going to take a look at seven of the most savage things Michael Jordan has ever done, and sometimes he went a bit overboard. Of course, there's probably way more instances than just seven, but I try to pick out the best, most iconic moments I could find. My name's Andy, and without further ado, let's get started. Honorable mention to the time where Jordan supposedly made Kwame Brown cry by calling him a homophobic slur. For many years, people assumed that this was the case, and Jordan went way overboard with that. However, years later, Brown cleared it up and said that this rumor was false, and Jordan, while he was hard on him, he never called him a slur or made him cry. So it's about time we put this rumor to rest. Anyway, starting at number 7, Michael Jordan and Chameleonaire. One of the most iconic artists of the early 2000s, Chameleonaire also happened to be one of the biggest MJ fans ever. He grew up idolizing him, watching him and the Bulls throughout the 80s and 90s, and just absolutely amazed by Jordan. He was his childhood hero, but despite his own success in the music industry, it took a long time before he got to meet MJ. By 2009, he had his chance. They were in the same room together. He saw MJ talking with Spike Lee and a bunch of other NBA players. Chameleonaire recounted what happened, saying that he approached MJ to get a photo with him. He was even wearing his MJ jersey that he purchased from an auction for $7,000. That's how much he idolized him. Unfortunately, Jordan completely dismissed him. In fact, he told Chameleonaire that if he wanted a photo with him, he would have to buy another one of his jerseys for $15,000, and then he'll take a photo. Even though he was rich and 15 grand wouldn't be that much, it was just the whole concept of it. The attitude Jordan displayed greatly upset him. For being such a huge fan of Jordan, this absolutely stunned him and changed his entire perception of him. But realistically, if you heard about all the stories of Jordan being a prick, he shouldn't have been surprised. Don't meet your heroes. Number 6, MJ and Rodney McRae. So we've all heard about the famous interaction between MJ and Muggsy Bogues. There was a time when Jordan was defending him and told him to, quote, shoot it, you f***ing midget. But that's not that bad. I mean, Muggsy has probably heard that thousands of times, unfortunately. However, with this instance between MJ and Rodney McRae, it was pretty damn obnoxious. What happened was, in the 1992 offseason, the Bulls were on top of the world. They were aiming to win their third consecutive championship, and over the summer, they signed Rodney McRae. Initially, MJ was excited and praised the versatility that McRae would bring to the table. One instance of trash talk at practice changed everything. The two went back and forth very briefly, and while McRae stops talking back, Jordan continued to pile on him. He screamed at McRae's face, calling him a loser, useless, throwing slurs and other derogatory terms, and continued to go at him, relentlessly, while McRae was just trying to engage in some friendly trash talk. A former teammate talked about this incident, and this is how he described it. He has practically ruined Rodney McRae for us. When the two players are on opposite teams in scrimmages, Jordan is in Rodney's face, screaming, You're a loser, you've always been a loser. Rodney can hardly put up a jumper now. The 1992-93 season would be McRae's worst season in the NBA by far, and also his last. Throughout the year, he had limited minutes and essentially got shunned from the team because of MJ. On the bright side, at least he went out with a championship. Number 5, MJ and Stacey King. Most of you know him as a commentator for the Chicago Bulls, providing very colorful, enthusiastic commentary for a long time, especially during those years with Derrick Rose. Oh my goodness, he broke his ankle! Oh my goodness, is there a medic in the house? Oh, this. Watch, watch Miller. Ow, I hurt my ankle! Oh, I fell down, and I can't get up! 
Stacy King was also a former player. During the 90s, he also played for the Bulls, and apparently, he was quite the weird fella. There were some funny stories involving him and MJ. King was a massive MJ fan, he had posters of him all over his room. And before every college game, he would, quote, lovingly touch three Michael Jordan posters on his walls. Yeah, that's pretty damn weird. Fortunately for him, he got drafted by the Bulls in 1989. Right when he joined the team, one of the first things he did was rub his body against the actual Michael Jordan, who was half-naked in his underwear in the locker room. This was their first encounter, so it was awkward as hell. And the funny thing is, King didn't even realize it was strange until years later, where he admitted, yeah, it was probably awkward. But unrelated to this incident, or I don't know, maybe it was related, MJ was also known to be quite harsh to younger players, but this was especially the case with Stacey King. This led to one of the most savage quotes I've ever heard him say to a teammate. You ever hear of a guy, 6'11 maybe, and 260 pounds, a guy big and fat like that and he can't get but two rebounds? If that many? Running all over the damn court and he gets two rebounds? Can't even stick his ass into people and get more than that. Big, fat, fat guy. One rebound in three games. Power forward. Maybe they should call it powerless forward. Of course, King's career in Chicago did not last much longer. Number 4, MJ and Scottie Pippen. MJ is well known for his love of gambling, perhaps even an addiction to gambling, to the point where he does it so casually, in so many different occasions. Combined with his undeniable drive to win, this has led to instances where his gambling practices have been criticized. He cares too much about winning, so he'll do whatever it takes. During his days on the Bulls, he used to scam Scottie Pippen out of tons of money, by betting on those, you know, Dunkin' Donut races on the Jumbotron in the Bulls arena. He would make $100 bets with Scotty to guess the winner of the race, and most oftenly, Jordan would come out victorious. Scotty lost a ton of money by losing these bets to Jordan. However, decades later, it came out that Jordan would pull up pre-recorded races to bet with Scotty. So most of the time, he already knew who the winner was. For years, Scotty had no idea he was getting swindled. Number 3, MJ and Steve Kerr. This is a story most of y'all are familiar with, but here's the deets. Steve Kerr was brand new to the team, and as usual, Jordan likes to pick on the new guys. Unlike most other guys though, Kerr would not back down, despite being heavily outsized and outplayed on almost every possession. In practice, he would get into MJ's face and wasn't afraid to back down. On one occasion, Jordan was talking during a scrimmage, but Kerr disagreed with him. Now, Kerr was getting under his skin all practice, until MJ finally cracked. Kerr said MJ threw a punch right at his face. But afterwards, Kerr never backed down and continued to scrap. According to him, he stated that this was the moment where he earned MJ's respect. Their relationship wasn't going well in the beginning, as Kerr had a lot to prove and nobody knew if he was going to stay on the final roster. This moment changed that. Both Kerr and MJ became the closest of friends. Number 2, MJ and everyone on his team. In the late 80s, the Bulls were getting absolutely manhandled by the Pistons. Jordan himself has always had great series, despite the physicality, he always pushed through and gave the Pistons all they could handle. However, year after year of losing to them got him frustrated, especially with his lackluster supporting cast. The day after another loss to the Pistons, he felt like everyone else wasn't giving as much effort as he was, which royally pissed him off. Jordan saw Horace Grant and Scottie Pippen goofing around after the loss, and not taking it seriously. In the book, The Jordan Rules, it recounted a lot of interesting locker room interactions between Jordan and his teammates. According to an acquaintance who was in the locker room, after this loss to the Pistons, Jordan turned to the reporter and said, I looked over and saw Horace and Scotty screwing around, joking and messing up. They've got the talent, but they don't take it seriously. And the rookies were together as usual, the white guys. They work hard, but they don't have the talent. And the rest of them? Who knows what to expect? They're not good for much of anything. 
This started a long list of things that Jordan continued to say over the years. When he first came into the league, he was more mellow and willing to go with the flow, less confrontational with his teammates. But through the years and through all the losses to the Pistons, it slowly got Jordan irritated, and interactions like that became commonplace. It created an atmosphere that was uncomfortable, to say the least, as everyone had to feed his giant ego. At least it worked out in the end. And finally, at number one, MJ and Isaiah Thomas. Although there were different perspectives on what went down, Jordan did not want to play with Isaiah Thomas on the 1992 Dream Team. That was a fact. He mentioned that in a book from 2013 called The Dream Team, where Jordan was quoted saying to Rod Thorne, the chairman of the men's USA basketball team, Rod, I don't want to play if Isaiah's on the team. At this time in the early 90s, the NBA's goal was to expand basketball into a global sport, so that meant it was necessary for MJ to play in the Olympics. In the last dance, when Jordan stated the team's greatest strength was his camaraderie and then was asked if Isaiah would have changed that, he said yes. At the time, it wasn't only MJ. A few other players were hesitant on having Isaiah on the team, including Scotty and Karl Malone, to a lesser extent Magic and Bird as well. A lot of players had beef with him, but MJ's decision was the only one that mattered. Despite Isaiah being a fantastic player, one of the best in the league, he was not invited to participate, and he felt very sad about it. However, since so many players had issues with him joining the team, then maybe it was for the best. As decorated of a career he's had, the Olympic gold medal has eluded him. It was something he never got a crack at. Anyway, that's all folks. As great of a player MJ is, we all know he was sometimes hard to get along with, especially with his teammates. Stories over the years of his relentless competitiveness and hardcore attitude often rubbed people the wrong way. But at the end of the day, winning heals everything. Let me know your thoughts of any other savage MJ moments that went overboard. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. Thank you all so much for watching, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.